the Lord everybody all right now you know how we do it we in church so when we say praise the Lord everybody we're not praising nobody but Jesus okay so let me hear you give God a high praise come on give him a high praise okay is he worthy of your praise did he wake you up this morning did he start you on your way all right well, we're so glad, we're so glad that we are here tonight. This is the culmination of all of the celebrations, all of the shifting. What we are doing here tonight 
is the tangible expression of what has happened in the spirit realm. And so we are excited to be formally installing Pastor James L.J. Brown. That's right. And so when we start passing out the programs and if you should happen not to receive one, we've still got you covered. You can scan the QR code that's on the beautiful screen behind me and still be in tune with worship. As well, once the procession has been completed, if you desire to move up in any empty seat, you may do so. And so at this time, as the choir begins to sing, Holy, 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 we want to welcome the cross bearer who should always lead our procession. say that we are one voice so let's sing together with the choir now we'd like to welcome the guest clergy none other than Bishop B Courtney McBath of Calvary Revival Church come on put your hands together for him as he comes his beautiful wife Lady Janine McBath is awaiting his presence seated in a place of honor. Immediately following Bishop McBath, is the very own elders council and the associate ministers of the Mount Global Fellowship of Churches. Please receive them with a hand. That's it. associates are being seated, please welcome the diaconate of the Mount Global Fellowship with a hand. The deacons are the hands and the feet of the bishop.
it. Come on, let's sing together. Lord God, at this time, please welcome the senior site pastors and the spouses of the Mount Global Fellowship of Churches. Welcome them with a rousing applause. to welcome the executive pastor of the Mount Global Fellowship of Churches, Minister Kimberly Williams and Mr. Linwood Williams. They will be seated. Amen. In a place of honor. Come on, you all give them a hand as they come down. you all to give this next individual a very loud applause. She is beauty and brains. None other than the executive pastor emeritus, Elder Valerie K. Brown. Come on, let's hit it, y'all. bringing in the candidate for installation. None other than Pastor James L.J. Simba Brown and Lady Keisha Brown. Come on, give it up.
Christ. Now, it gives me great honor and pleasure to introduce my pastor, the presiding prelate of the Mount Global Fellowship of Churches, the Bishop Kim W. Brown. Put your hands together. Bring it out. Come on, let's sing together, y'all. How many know he's holy? He's holy. He's holy. How many know he's holy? Come on. How many know he's holy? How many know he's holy? He's Lord God Almighty. He's everything you need. Whatever you need him to be, he is. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. We celebrate tonight. Come on, let's go. We celebrate. And as we celebrate, we simply say, praise the Lord. All ye people, praise the Lord. All ye nation, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah for this great celebration. Yeah. 
give God some glory. I, have, I got one question for you. How long? I think they I think they got it over here. I got one question for you. How long does his mercy endure? I think y'all got it. Let's do it one more time. How long does his mercy endure? Well, you ought to give him some praise like it's enduring in your life and in your life and in your life and in your life and in, life and in yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, one time for it. Hallelujah. All right, all right. I don't want to. Woo! All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Listen, I need everybody that's in the building to stand on your feet because you saw there's a general getting ready to come to the platform. I think, I think they missed it. I need everybody standing on your feet because if you were in court and they said, all rise, you stand up. You know, so there's a general. We are in the army of the Lord, are we not? And this is not a one-star general. This is not a two, three, or four-star general. Those of you who know military jargon, when you get to five stars, you've won some battles. And you've had to participate in some wars. Well, our general has won some battles and he's participated in some wars. So I want you to scream to the top of your lungs and welcome the general in the faith by the name of Bishop Kim Walter Brown. Thank you, sir. Love you, too. Amen. Amen. Well, good evening, good evening, good evening. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Can we just bless God one more time for this day? Come on, let's just put our hands together and bless God for another day that he's kept us. Now, let me just say this. I know we've had the shift weekend, and y'all, let me just tell you, Chesapeake, well, let me just say to the Global Fellowship, the shift weekend, um was first of all beyond expectation, but y'all blessed your bishop. Amen. Amen. So I recognize that. And then right behind that came Resurrection Sunday, Supernatural Day of Giving. Chesapeake, we not quite at our mark, but we pressing on the upward way. I'm, going, I'm dying to tell y'all what you have given, but I'm going to leave that up to the new pastor. I don't want to steal his thunder, um, you know. And then, so I know Easter came early. We had the shift weekend. So look at your neighbor and tell them, my pockets are light. <laughs> I already know that. And then I get up tonight to, after, you know, all that was just said and raising off. And you know what's so amazing? Um, Minister Chris Williams cut my grass today, and so he told me to let you know why he couldn't be here today. He said he had called you. Everybody knows Elder and I have moved. We're downsizing. And y'all know Elder has more faith than me. That ain't never been a secret. Elder has more faith than me. I wanted to move in a hotel, sell the old house, and then buy a house. That's what I wanted to do. Let's not count our chickens before they hatch. And y'all know the story. Elder sends me up to somebody's front door, the house not even on the market, and ring the doorbell and just tell them, my wife likes your house. So ghetto. She more ghetto than me. That was so ghetto. And um, long story short, we moved into their house. 
And they come to our house now to pick up their old mail because it happens so quick. I'm going somewhere with this. So the old house has not sold. So can I get y'all to come into agreement with me? That's what I'm preaching Sunday anyway. I need where two or three are gathered. So can you just stretch your hand to heaven and say, sell this house, Lord. Sell this. Yeah, thank y'all so much. Thank y'all. Because you know when you got two houses, not only are you taking care of the utilities, but all the little other things like cutting grass. I'm going somewhere. I'm setting y'all up. Chris Williams, Chris Williams cuts my grass. And the old house has 16 acres, so Chris charges me 16 acre rate. Yeah, you know, I'm in the wrong business. Y'all need to get you a lawnmower and start cutting people grass. Get you one edge of car. Them boys is getting paid. And so, so, you know, when we got the new house, Chris just came around there automatically cut the grass. I said, hold on, Chris, slow your roll now. Slow your roll. I said, because first of all, you're using my lawnmower. So he came to the new house, the old house, we had all these garages so we could keep everything. You know, the new house ain't got all these garages and stuff. So he said, well, you ain't got nowhere to keep the lawnmower. So how about if I just keep it? I'm like, so you gonna keep my lawnmower and then come to my house and charge me the 16 acre rate riding around on my lawnmower. One of his trailers is my trailer, so you're going to haul my stuff to my house on my trailer. And so I said, Chris, we got to work something out. We got to work something out. I can't be paying you to cut both of these yards. He said, what you do? What you want to do, Bishop? I said, well, I'm going to have to charge you some rent for this lawnmower. I said, because every time I turn around, I see you shooting down Battlefield Boulevard. You coming up Campus Stella Road. He said, I ain't cutting that many yards. Well, you show sure moving a lot. I don't, you know, all I can tell you is you show sure taking it all over Hampton Road. So you can tell me you ain't cutting a lot of yards, but it looked like you doing pretty good. So Chris said, I tell you what, Bishop, you and the elder have been so good to me. I'm going to cut the new house and the old house for the same price. So watch this. So last week I come home, I've, I've been doing office hours, I come home, and I see Chris's men walking down the street in my neighborhood. So I had to stop Chris and say, nice, Chris, let me just tell you, um, where I used to live is a little bit different than where I'm living now. Where I used to live, I ain't really had no neighbors. I said, but you know, in this neighborhood, you got to tell your boys, they can't just be walking down the street because these folks got a homeowners association, they're called a popo. I said, I just want to let you know. He said, no, Bishop, they were working. I said, so they were working? He said, yeah, man, the dude at the, at the corner. I said, yeah. He said, man, he came down last week when I was cutting your grass and asked me could I cut his trees. I said, okay. I said, so the dude where the lift was out there, he said, yeah, his trees were so tall. I told the guy, in order for me to cut trees that tall, he needed to go get one of them lifts. He said, so the guy said, I'll order the lift. It'll be delivered on Wednesday. All you got to do is just show up. He said, and then the man messed around. Me and my boys was down there cutting the trees. He paid me $3,000 for cutting his trees. Then he said, and on top of that, Bishop, he gave each one of my guys a $50 tip. I said, well, tell you guys, first of all, when they come to my yard, their tip is a bottle of water out of that refrigerator in the garage. <laughs> but he said, people don't believe, man, this giving thing works. He said, I messed around and gave you your yard for free, and now I'm getting $3,000 in one day. And I was going to say, so my stuff ought to be free today, but... But I didn't want to go there. Bishop, years ago, when we were getting ready to plant the, the Elizabeth City Church, the church gave me in, and um, at that time, it was Sister Brenda Furby. Those of you from EC, you remember that track of land right there between the prison and the Walmart. All those thousands of acres right there when you pass the prison on the left going to the Walmart. I didn't tell the church, but the elders and the budget committee had given me the ability to go with a $100,000 cashier check, JT. So, you know, I'm rolling up in there like a big dog. I got 100,000 Gs in my pocket because some of that land was for sale. So we were going to be in on like eight, nine acres and build the church there. So we, we got ready. They got ready to start the auction. 
and the phone rang. The auctioneer answered the phone and said, hello. And he, he said, there's somebody on, from New York that's already started the bidding. And the bidding started at $3.5 million. That's why I said, I looked at Sister Brenda, I said, I guess we'll take our little $100,000 check and go on back to Chesapeake. And so I started asking, you know, I know we got Elizabeth sitting in the house. I said, man, how would the guy from New York know how valuable the land is in Elizabeth City? He had gotten the soil report. He said, I don't have to see it. I know how many bushels of corn that land yields per acre because the soil is good. That's all I got for you tonight. All I can tell you is, sounds so presumptuous, but the little church that they laughed at, Pastor Baysmore, 35 years ago, preacher called me and said, man, you going to that little church on Bellsmere Road, they going to kill you down there. Ain't nobody saying it 34 years later because the soil was good. So we're getting ready to give. And um, I know, I know it's, you know, interesting times, summertime is coming. I'm just going to ask you, would you look at your neighbor and just tell him, do your best? Now, Sunday, one of the things that's so neat about me now that I've repositioned is I get to go visit the sites. So on Sunday, I'm at the Mount Penn, and Pastor Alvin does the offering. Now, on Sunday here in Chesapeake, you know, y'all give like a big dog, but y'all give electronically. So it'll mess you up on Sunday here in Chesapeake because you'll ask for people to bring their tithes and offering. It'd be like 50 people. And you'd be thinking, oh, my God, it's because everybody's giving electronically. And so when I was at the pen on Sunday, Pastor Alvin called for the offering. The whole church got up. That messed my mind up. I leaned over to him. I said, Pastor Alvin, no wonder y'all giving is going crazy. I said, man, look at all these people giving. He said, Bishop, they're giving online. I said, but why are they walking to the altar? He said, because we still believe you need to bring it. He says, so although they've given online, they bring their phone up and tap the thing like that just to let God know I've, I've already given, but I'm still bringing it to the altar. So I'm going to pray real quick, and even if you're giving online, I just want you to come witness to the Holy Spirit tonight and witness to the new pastor by just bringing whatever it is that God has given you. Just give, You can give online, but just bring your phone or your device and just tap the bucket. Amen. God, right now in the name of Jesus, we believe that supernaturally you return seed for you. Tell us that as long as the earth remaineth, there will be seed time and harvest. And so we believe right now that this is good ground. We've proven that. We've seen the fruit that comes. So right now, tell us what to give and we will obey because obedience is better than a sacrifice. In Jesus' name, amen. Wherever you are there, you can go old school. You can go old school just like this person. But please know, when it's, when it's in the white envelope, it's tithe. You can write whatever you want up there, but, but, but you know, in my mindset, it's tithe when you, when you. Y'all, can you bless God for Corey Jubilee, our resident contractor right there? Here's why. First Sunday in May, the Mount Western branch will not be in a school. Y'all ought to put your hands together for that. They'll be in their new building. So even if you're giving online, just bring your cell phone up here and tap it and just say, Lord, bless it right now in Jesus' name. Bless it right now in Jesus' name. Bless it right now. If you're giving electronically, um, I don't know, Dr. Kimberly, you can, what's your, what's your, what's your cash app, Pastor? Oh, y'all going to put his cash app up there? Okay, they doing all that already? All right. Hey, sweetheart. New York, New York in the house. Hey, how are you? Bless you. Bless y'all. Bless y'all. Bless y'all. And ever, and ever, for all He's done for me. Just wanna thank you 
Congratulations on the award. Girl, you wearing the bow baby. in the house. They retired. Trap Elder said that the other day. You see, that's how you're supposed to retire. They in Paris. I said, girl, you in Chesapeake. Turn with me, turn with me, y'all. You know, we got, we got a, we not going to keep you here all night. Um, thank you to family and friends that are here. I'm going to leave all that up to Pastor and um, Minister Dr. Uh, Keisha when they come. I'm going to do a homily. Um, now, I see y'all messed around. Um, Kendrick got his brother on the organ tonight. I see y'all ain't, y'all ain't about to do that to me tonight. Y'all must have watched the pen. Pen Sunday tried to preach me like I was silly. So I ain't got much. Elder had me out there riding on the bike yesterday. We rode all down the Moyak, came home. My throat was almost closed because of that pollen. <laughs> and my ego getting bruised now because I used to just hop on the bike now. And then I had to help her. Now she hop on the bike and said, come on, I got you. I'm like, oh, Lord, the devil is a lie. I messed around now. And this girl and got these knees and hips done. And she hopping up there. She used to say, we, she used to tap me on the shoulder, say, we've been riding long enough, time to go home. Now she like, oh, you turning down our street already? I'm like, oh, Lord, girl, we going home. About to get my hips and my knees done or something. So y'all pray for me. Matthew chapter 17. Matthew chapter 17. I'm going to be here Sunday, y'all, for pastor's birthday. So Chesapeake, I'm in the house. Now let me tell y'all what I, what I, <laughs> I need y'all, because cause somebody called me Sunday and said, man, 8 o'clock was full and 10 o'clock looked like it did before COVID. Yeah, you know, y'all throw y'all shade real interestingly. And so Sunday, y'all better come on up in here. Um, I asked, I asked um, Sister Shannon the other day for the growth numbers, checking on the pastor. You know, it's been six weeks. And I just asked her for the numbers since he has taken over. She gonna send me the January and February numbers. And then send me the March to the second Sunday in April number. I ain't ask you for no January through February number. I ask you for the number from first Sunday in March to the second Sunday in April. I know I was clear on the communication. She gonna send me the numbers from first Sunday in January to the fourth Sunday in February, broke out, and then said, this is January through February, as if to say, when you were here, this is the growth number. 132 people, that's right, brother ain't no chopped liver, 132 people made a decision for the kingdom of God the month of January and February. I, ain't, I see y'all looking, I ain't about to tell you what the other number was. Because I see that spirit all in y'all. No, I ain't telling y'all what the number was. Y'all want... See, see, that's what happened when you start getting all these young people in your church, they get out of order. See, see, when I had my old crowd, won't no hollering from the pew like that. You need to shut this stuff down. 
see you going after that young generation and see that they don't know nothing about the order of the kingdom. We know the number already. Okay. I got to do this because, cause, you know, for everybody, like, how the church doing? Okay, 132 people made decisions January and February. First Sunday. Y'all ain't got to clap. A brother ain't got no ego problem there. I'd be retired. I fell in love with this. I played golf three Sundays ago. I, God loves you playing golf. I play golf better on Sunday. I figured that out. My swing is better. So, so first Sunday in March to the second Sunday in April, 172 people. I'm proud of you. Y'all, when we got ready to talk about this transition, my son said to me, he said, Daddy, you discipled your generation. Please don't rob me of the opportunity to disciple mine. Now, since y'all clapped and went all crazy, 172 people, and we already know the number, let me tell him, let me tell y'all what I told the new pastor. I said, now, the saints that I disciple were not new to church. All I had to do is teach them how to tithe. They were already used to giving to the church, but they need to be taught tithing. I said, now you bringing in a demographic that ain't never been in church, you better teach them how to give. They'll burn up all your electric lights. And, and talking like my granddaddy, they'll burn up all your electricity up in here and not be giving. So, but I'm just really proud of, proud of them. And I think the scripture the other night, Jeremiah, you in here this morning, this evening, Jeremiah's in the MIT program the other day, Bishop, I was teaching the MITs the other night, and I said, man, if y'all say y'all MITs, y'all ought to be able to figure out where I'm going for Pastor LJ's installation. I said, raise your hand if you think you know the scripture. Jeremiah, your husband, raised his hand and sure enough knew the scripture. He said, I know that's where you're going, Bishop. After six days, this is Matthew 17, 1 through 9, Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John, his brother, and bringeth them up into a high mountain apart, and was transfigured before them, and his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was white as the light. And behold, there appeared to them Moses and Elias, Elijah, if you don't know what that is, talking with him. Then answered Peter and said unto Jesus, Lord, it's good for us to be here. If thou wilt, let us make here three tabernacles, one for thee and one for Moses and one for Elijah or Elias. While he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. And behold, a voice out of the cloud which said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Hear ye him. And when the disciples heard it, they fell on their face and were so afraid. And Jesus came and touched them and said, Arise and be not afraid. And when they had lifted up their eyes, they saw no man save Jesus only. And as they came down from the mountain, Jesus charged them, saying, Tell the vision to no man until the Son of Man be risen again from the dead. My assignment for the homily tonight is from this subject. Can you just say it with me? The productivity of transition. Look at somebody around you and just tell them transition is productive. Father, I pray for anointing that will enable me to preach the gospel, and I declare that when you are finished talking tonight, I will sit down. In Jesus' name, amen. I see Mother Ruth here tonight. Can y'all bless God for Mother Ruth, Mother Ruth in the house? Elder Raymond, oldest man, oldest lady. The reason I want to recognize them too is for those of you that remember Miss S.M.A. Gray. Many of you don't remember Miss S.M.A. Gray. When I first came to, to the church, Miss S.M.A. Gray was the woman that would sit right behind Elder. And if somebody by chance was visiting our church and they took that seat, she would tell them, that's my first lady seat. 
she would tap him on the shoulder, and she was serious. Miss Essie Mae Gray, you remember, Sister Barbara, Miss Essie Mae Gray had gone to prison for murder. So she took, she was the first, I think her and Sister Barbara Duels were probably elders' first armor bearers before we knew what armor bearers really were. Kimberly was like Kennedy. She would sit in her mother's lap. If she didn't sit in her mother's lap, she would be in Miss Barbara Dewar's lap. If she wasn't in Miss Barbara Dewar's lap, she would be in Miss Essie Mae Gray's lap. Miss Essie Mae Gray, when she came to the church, she testified. She said, y'all, I've been to prison because I didn't know how to control my temper. Amen. So you got to understand, when somebody would sit in Elder Valerie's chair, she would tap him on the shoulder and say, excuse me, that's my first lady seat. I would tell him you might want to get up and... <laughs> try another seat. She was serious, but Kimberly tempered her. One Sunday, Kimberly reaches up and grabs, I'm going somewhere, I promise you, grabs her pearls around her neck and breaks the strand of pearls, and they scatter all over our little 40 by 40 sanctuary. And she says, don't worry about it. Leave my baby alone. She would call her her baby. She would come to church and she would say, First lady, give me my baby. Kimberly would sit on her lap. It was always Miss Essie Mae Gray's dream to have a house. She was homeless much of her life. So, O.J., I found out that one of my trustees had a rental property on Bells Mill Road, Linwood Senior, um, after I'd gotten approval from the joint board that took, whoo, a long time. <laughs> you know, that was back in the day, shout back in the day. Back in the day, the joint board gave me permission. We went and rented the house for her. And I'll never forget when I drove her up to the house and she said, who lives here? I said, you live here, Miss Essie Mae. And I gave her her house key. I'm going somewhere. I'm going somewhere. <laughs> Renee, if you remember her, I gave her her house key. Saints, that Sunday when she came to church, she had the house key tied on a string hanging around her neck. She said, Pastor, it's not so that I won't lose it. She said, I want everybody to see it because I've never had a house key before. Anybody in here other than me remember when you finally got old enough that your mother and father gave you your first house key? You didn't have to come home early from school and go under the flower pot or go under the doormat and, and get the key and then find out that your mother had mistakenly taken the key that morning so you had to sit on the porch until some of y'all too middle class, you don't remember that. <laughs> Anybody remember when you got your first real house key? Anybody remember when you lost your first real house key and had to tell your mother or father that you had lost it. Anybody remember when you turned in Virginia 15 and eight months, Jason? You were now old enough to get your learner's permit or your driver's license. If you were like me, I remember taking Pastor LJ down to get his driver's license. Funny story, true as it can be. Back in the day, OJ, you remember the lady from New Oak Grove worked in the DMV. The lady from my brother-in-law's church worked in the DMV. And so um, Pastor LJ had taken his driver's license test the first time. I was not in agreement with him. And so the Lord didn't bless the first time. He, 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 he didn't get all of the signs correct. He was doing it on the computer, and the computer said, you have not answered enough questions correctly. I was so glad that he had not passed the driving test because I didn't want to give my vehicle to him because vehicles are very personal to me. Um, Marino's true story, true story, so a week, I think you had to wait a week. A week later, we go back to DMV. I am not in agreement again. I'm praying against him passing. His mother has had the little DMV book and been studying with him, and here he knows all of the signs, but they change the test every week. So today, 
today they're not asking about the signs, they're asking about your distance from school buses and all this other stuff. And I can see when he comes out of DMV, his head is down and he walks to the car. What he couldn't see was me in my underbreath saying, Lord, thank you that he has failed again. The third time, the third time, the third time. Look, elbow your neighbor and tell him he's setting us up on a Friday night. We don't even know it. The third time, you do know three is a special number for believers. Okay, y'all just missed the whole turn. I thought we were Bible church. Three is a special number for believers. So the third time we go to DMV, the lady from New Oak Grove says, Bishop, it wasn't Bishop then, Pastor Brown, come here, come here. I go over to her and she said, why are you in here? I said, my son is trying to get his driver's license. I said it with righteous indignation like he's going to fail for the third time today. And she says, okay, let me, let me see what I can do. And she goes to the computer and she says, oh, I noticed he's already taken the test twice. She said, I said, yeah. She said, bring him up here to the table. And so when he came up to the table, Miss Gwen, she said, you know you have a choice. You can take a written test if you really want to take a written test. He said, no, ma'am, I'll take the computer test. She said, you can take a written test if you really want to take a written test. He said, no, ma'am, I'll take the computer test. I said, son, the lady is telling you, take the written test. Take the written test. Take the written test. No wonder you have failed the commute. Take the written test. The lady can't help you with the computer, but the lady is saying she might be able to help you with the written test. He said, yes, ma'am, I want to take the written test. It was, here it is, y'all, a rites of passage. He goes in, takes the written test, and there are some marks on the written test that are not quite right, Jew, yet. She says, come here. She said, I know you know what kind of sign this is, don't you? And he says, yes, ma'am. She said, I thought you did. And she takes the eraser. Oh, I'm going somewhere. While y'all judging him, you ought to look at three people and tell them, I wouldn't be living where I'm living if God God had to be racist. Some... Okay, don't y'all make me go revival on you in here tonight. You ought to look at somebody and tell them I'm alive because grace is an eraser that qualifies me even when I don't get it right. Whew, God, I feel something right there. So, so, so he comes out, he walking like George Jefferson now comes home and shows his mom his driver's license and then asks me the question that I've been waiting to hear and get myself together. He says, Daddy, can I borrow the car? Oh, God, I set you up. Y'all got a premature shout cue. It was a transition. It was not the most comfortable transition, but it was a transition that brought productivity with it. I didn't realize that him getting his license was going to be a blessing in disguise. Because then I could call him out of the backyard and say, son, come here. Your grandmama has cooked me some collard greens. Ride on around there and pick up my collard greens. I didn't realize that I could call him and say, my mama needs some light bulbs. Go to the store and get my mama some light bulbs and take them light bulbs on around there. What I thought was one of the hardest moments. It ended up working out on my behalf. Oh, God, I wish I had a praying church on Friday night. Look at somebody and tell them, I got a feeling this thing is going to work out all right if we can sign off on it, if we can really get ourselves together. I believe God is doing something. Here it is, here it is. Give them to you real quick, son, four things, and then we're going we're gonna to lay our hands on you. We're going to go eat some chicken nuggets. <laughs> the first product that happens in this text, because in case you missed it, the text is apropos. Yeah. Yeah. It's a father yeah. transitioning the hands of the ministry assignment yeah. over to his son. 
Now, before you get it twisted and throw me under the bus tonight on Facebook, I'm not saying I'm Jesus. I'm not saying he's Jesus, and I'm not saying I'm Jehovah. But for everybody that says these moments are not in order, then you just critiqued your theological foundation. Because God the Father releases the assignment to his son. And if he had not have released the assignment to his son, none of us would be in the room tonight. Oh, I wish I had three real worshipers that would say, I got a feeling this is going to be all right. Thank God for the son. And so watch this. The first thing that happens, son, is when the father turns it over to his son, there is a release of fear. It's the same way with Chesapeake. Folks are scared. What they don't realize is y'all are too. What they don't realize is I am too. I backed up in the first parking space tonight. Thank you for leaving it for me. You didn't have to, but thank you for the respect. In the text, here's what's so crazy. When the transition happens, it says the disciples get so afraid. Not just afraid, they get so afraid. They get afraid to the point that it's painful. I know Chesapeake, y'all like, what we gonna do now? We got this young guy. He ain't bishop. The reality is, I love what Jesus says to him. He says, don't be afraid. It's going to be all right. So would you look at your neighbor real quick? I'm moving quickly and just tell him, don't be afraid. Anybody here know that the last time you were afraid, here's your shout cue. The last time you were worried about something, didn't God work it out? Okay, let's call the roll. The last time you were worried before that, didn't God handle his business? It's amazing to me because, you know, I told y'all, Bishop, you're going to have the same situation in, in the summer. The, the, he, they said my banquet that, that our financial manager was sitting with some local ministers and they were wondering how in the world is Bishop going to survive living in that big old house out there. He said, I was sitting there. I ain't want to let them know who I am and I didn't want to tell them. I think he's going to be all right. The reality is they didn't think that they thought that Mount Lebanon was taking care of me. Jehovah has been taking care of me. God just blessed Mount Lebanon to be able to do it. I ain't belittling that, but you ought to look at somebody and tell them, don't be tripping. What I'm driving, God made that happen. What I'm wearing, God made that happen. Where I'm living, God made that happen. The reason I can stand and raise my hand is because God is still good. Do I have any worshipers in here that'll look at somebody and tell them, I ain't going to be afraid because when my enemy comes upon me to eat up my flesh, they going to stumble and they'll fall. You ought to look at somebody and tell them, I'm a whole lot of things, but afraid is not one of them. I got a whole lot of issues, but fear is not one of them because the same way God took care of me last time, he'll take care of me this time. So the first thing that happens, Pastor Quentin, is there's a release of fear. But then watch this secondly. Here it is. I'm going to get a little deeper. The second thing that happens when the transition moment manifests is not only does it release fear, but it re reproduces favor. Watch this, Deacon Kenny. It's crazy. Theologically, I know I got all these unionites and theologues that are here. Y'all ever thought about the fact that when the transition gets ready to happen, here comes Moses and Elijah? Why they there? God getting ready to turn the ministry over to Jesus, and here comes a hologram of Moses and Elijah. They weren't showing up to judge the situation. They were showing up, Elder, to remind folks of the favor that existed when they were the leader. As if to say the same favor that existed when we were leading is going to be on him when he starts. Oh, I better, watch this, watch this, watch this. I got a revelation. Can y'all handle it on a Friday night? Y'all declared, I'm Moses. Well, if I'm Moses, she Elijah. And we here tonight 
We're not here tonight trying to take over. We're here tonight to remind you that the same favor that was on Valerie Brown and Kim Brown is on Keisha Brown and James Brown. You got to understand, oh, God, I feel something right there. You better watch that. That was my call. You got to understand, Moses is a bad somebody. Moses is the brother that had so much favor on his life that when they get to the Red Sea, he doesn't even have a church meeting. He just stretches his arm out, and the waters start to roll back. Elijah is so bad that when there's a confrontation, Elijah says, I tell you what, call on your God, and I'll call on my God. And to make it even more dramatic, I'll pour water on the altar of my God, and if your God can't light a fire, we'll see which God can. Son, don't let nobody mess with your mind. The same favor that was on your mama and your daddy is getting ready to fall on you. They laughed at us when we were in that little red brick church, and look at what God did. He raised up something out of there, and now there are sights everywhere. The same favor that was on us will be reproduced on you. I declare it in Jesus' name. Nobody can leave that's supposed to stay, and nobody can stay that's supposed to leave. All you got to do is walk out your favor. Okay. feel some Sunday morning trying to rise up right there. You ought to look at somebody and tell them, let them talk. Lights gonna stay on because favor got the lights on. Let them talk. The church gonna keep growing because favor attracts people. If you lift him up, they gonna come. Okay. Oh, God. Don't y'all mess with your boy. I'm trying to be fast. Okay, watch this. So the productivity of transition is number one, it releases fear. Number two, God, I feel something. I feel the glory of the Lord right there. I feel the glory of the Lord right there. I dare you to look at somebody and tell them, favor got me up this morning. I'm getting ready to move somewhere because favor got somewhere for me to go. Don't y'all play with this thing. If we go in there on a Friday night, we might as well go there and look at somebody and tell them, I got healed by favor. I'm in my right mind by favor. I got joy unspeakable by favor. Favor gave me the promotion. Favor gave me the joy of my salvation. Can we just worship God for a moment? Just for the favor of God. Woo. 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 Huh. Huh. I know we got to move on real quick. Can you just shout favor? I need you to shout it like you know it's going to meet you at your address when you get home. Favor. I need you to look at somebody and tell them, favor is all over me. Oh, you ought to look at your neighbor and tell them, glad you sat next to me because favor is on this row if I'm there. So watch this, Moses and Elisha show up to simply let the new leader know that the same favor that kept us is going to keep you. Okay, watch this, Dr. Keisha. Watch this, I'm, I'm going to say this real quick. This is probably a little messy, but it's a shout cue for those that will go there. I know people like Miss Barbara Dewars and, and, and Sister Renee and a couple of them remember one night in church meeting, they got, I don't know what happened, it got a little hot in our church meeting back in the day, and an and elder stood up to testify. And she said, I guess they were concerned about what we were driving. She said, I just want to let you know, I was driving a Benz when your pastor met me. She said, so get it straight. 
Y'all ain't paying for my car because I was driving a two-seater. I have downsized since I became your first lady. Come here, daughter-in-law. There might come a day when you had to get somebody straight. Do it in Jesus' name and tell them, my husband had me driving a Benz when I came. I need about three of you that'll jump up and say, favor, baby. Never, ever feel like you got to explain the goodness of God in your life. God did this. Okay, okay, watch this. I got to go, I got to go. Release his fear, reproduce his favor. But then thirdly, it readjusts focus. It readjusts focus. Because it's amazing. Moses and Elijah shows up. And then verse 8 happens. Come here, Elder, real quick, please, baby. I ain't going to embarrass you. I ain't going to ask you to do nothing. You ain't going to have to pray. You ain't got to bring nothing. Got to do this quick illustration. Come up here real quick. If, you mo if I'm Moses and you are Elijah, us being here tonight simply reproduces the favor on their life. But then verse 8 says, and when they had lifted up their eyes, They didn't see Moses and Elijah anymore. They only saw the new leader. Y'all still missing it. All of a sudden, Moses and Elijah were gone, and the only person that was left was Dr. Keisha and Pastor LJ. I'm going to do it like A.T. Alexander did it 34 years ago. When I became the pastor, A.T. Alexander stopped taking pastoral calls. He said, I'm no longer the pastor. I'm just the chairman deacon. We got a pastor now. So I just want to let everybody in Chesapeake know, starting tonight, you ain't got to call me no more. You got a pastor now. If you don't respect who he is, don't dial my number just because you got my number. I am not your pastor. That's your pastor. Moses and Elijah, we gone. See you. Wouldn't want to be you. We going to play golf. We going on cruises. We doing whatever God. I need about eight of you that'll jump up and say, we getting a pastor tonight. We getting a pastor tonight. Now, now if you could praise God on point two, you ought to be able to praise him on point three. We getting a pastor tonight. He know how to pray. His wife know how to pray. He know how to go to the hospital. He'll visit you in the hospital. I'm going to do a video for your funeral. And say, sister so-and-so was good while I was there. Bless your family. But that's the preacher because he's the pastor. I love the fact. And watch this. Watch this. Here's, here's what we miss in the text. One of the church deacons, Peter, says Moses and Elijah is good for y'all to be here. What we want to do is build a tabernacle for y'all. We don't want you to leave. No, we out. I'm just like Kobe. I'm dropping the mic tonight. Mamba out. I found out something last Sunday when I went to the Mount Pen. I was the bishop. Oh, God. That was a good feeling walking up in there. They had my picture on little signs. When I drove up to the church, the folks standing outside with my picture on a little sign. They had my picture on a sign inside. This is the bishop's room. I ain't never had my face on a sign before. It just made me feel real good. They were waving them signs and everything. I said, boy, I'm just glad to be here. And then I found out something else. When I got ready to go out the door, the armor bearer said, here's our honor of you, bishop. I said, oh, God, I get some honor, too. And then when we got home, Elder said, you preached so good today, I'm going to let you keep the check. I need you to stand up. We laughing, but I need you to stand up real quick. Point at him and say, that's our pastor. Moses and Elijah are gone. We ain't building no tabernacle. 
because that season is over. Okay. I'm there. So it releases fear, it reproduces favor, it readjusts focus. But watch this, Pastor. It reveals fortitude. It's in the text, and I'm finished. Here's what's so amazing. I have wrestled with this text for years. Pastor Teron, here's what's so crazy. And as they came down from the mountain, the new pastor told them, don't tell nobody what we doing. Er, the new pastor, Jesus, let me get it straight. I'm not calling him Jesus. I'm just saying he's the new leader. Jesus is the new leader in the text. And the new leader tells the church members, don't go out and tell nobody what we're doing. Watch this, Pastor Ferb. If you keep reading, they say, well, how are we supposed to respond to Elijah coming? The new leader says, they don't even understand what's happening. The new leader has been here. They just didn't know it. Go read the text. Said so a new leader showed up months ago, but they were so out of touch that they couldn't see what God was doing. So I had to wrestle with why does the new leader tell them, don't go entertain conversation? It's because he knows folks going to have some questions. And he's like, we don't owe anybody an explanation except God. Let me tell you your greatest gift that I don't have is you are not a people person, people pleasing person. I'm one of those people that want everybody to like me. He's one of those people that if you don't like me, that's on you. Been like that his whole life. If you saw him get in trouble, he didn't get un in trouble because somebody led him there. He made a decision. Because you ain't going to peer pressure him into doing nothing. I see Kurt back there nodding his head. Son, that is a great gift. Because what we're getting ready to do tonight, if you, remind your, if you remain a people pleaser, it's going to be detrimental because you're the leader. You're the leader. And this new leader, Dr. Keisha, knew when we come down off this mountain, there are going to be people down there that didn't come tonight that want to know, how was it? We ain't answering no questions. We ain't got to explain to nobody. I'm finished. That is what happens when transition happens. Y'all, I'm godly pleased tonight to be able to enter into this moment. I got to say, Chesapeake, thank you so much. If there was not an A.T. Alexander, and a Raymond Alexander, and a Henry Little, and a Sarah McGlone, and a Leon Coker, and a Lorenzo Holly that gave me a chance 34 years ago, I don't know where I would be. I came in with no experience. Y'all, here's what's so amazing. Dr. Keisha, I've seen his boldness rise up. But it's tempered. It's not arrogance, but it's boldness. We were doing a 3M not too long ago, and he was telling me that one of the couples in the church that I have mentored for years and years had gone to him, and he had sat down with them as they were making some life decisions. And he said, I met with them. I said, man, you met with them? He said, yeah. And then he said, Bishop, I do have some experience. I've been married 12 years to the same woman. I got three children. You don't think I got something I can share? And it was the way he came at me. It wasn't disrespectful, but he's like, 
You don't think I could have given them some good wisdom? And I said, yeah. And then it wasn't long after that, the couple texted me and said, man, Pastor LJ really helped us the other day. It was amazing. And so we're going to enter now. Oh, y'all move my thing. I need my paper. <laughs> Into the solemn moment of installation and Y'all, I read his bio. In fact, we still didn't get it right. I ain't, I ain't being funny. He did serve as the director of logistics for over 10 years, but he was an employee before that. He was our drummer. <laughs> Woo, boy, I'm glad that was before Minister Earl got here. <laughs> Minister Earl would have fired you. <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm just saying. Cause that brother was proficient with, with one beat. <laughs> if you were shouting, he was good to go, but anything other than that shout beat, you were in trouble. So every song we sang in that season had the shout beat behind it. <laughs> now we would shout so long, you remember son, we'd shout so long in that little red brick church on Bells Mill Road that his arms would get tired. And Wayne Mann, who's an officer in the military now, I think he's a major or something. They would slide him on the throne, and he'd keep that same. Wayne was just like Pastor LJ. He couldn't play but one beat either. <laughs> but their heart was right. And so Elijah, it gives me great joy to hear your request. Your grace. Bishop in the Lord's Church, the people of the Mount Global Fellowship of Churches, trusting under the guidance of the Holy Spirit, announce the appointment of James E. Brown. We therefore ask you to lay your hands upon him and in the power of the Holy Spirit to install him as senior site pastor of the Mount at Chesapeake. Brothers and sisters in Christ, you have heard the testimony given that James E. Brown has been duly and lawfully appointed to be pastor of the Mount at Chesapeake. You have been assured of his suitability and that the church has approved of him for this sacred responsibility. Is it your will that we install James E. Brown as senior site pastor? If so, say that is our will. Will you uphold him in this pastorate? I'm going to invite my friend to come now. And um, he really needs no introduction. But this is when I knew he was a real friend. If you remember, I'm going to be real transparent now. If you remember, there was an Issachar years ago when I guess I was just in my feelings. And I bled on the saints that night. And I left feeling so bad that on the way home, I called Bishop B. Courtney Macbeth. And I said, man, tonight I really messed up. By the time I got to my house to pull in my driveway, he was sitting in my driveway. We sat in my living room until late in the night with me just crying because I felt so bad, Jeff, that I had let my emotions get the best of me and I had bled on the saints. Saints were kind. They lied to me. Told me it was a great sermon, but it was not. It was a low point in ministry. That night, he said... The good news is, we serve a God that's full of grace and mercy. And he'll give you another chance to get it right. And I just sat there, and he said, man, I know the mount. He said, they're going to love you through a bad moment. 
and they did. Bishop, I don't know if you remember the other call was when the doctor came in that day, Lady Janine had told me I had cancer. I told the doctor, I said, look, you got to leave me in this little room by myself for a moment. I said, you just walked in and said, I just want you to know you got cancer. I'm like, you're supposed to work me up to that. Can't you start off with my pressure is high or something like that? You just went straight to cancer. I said, Doc, you got to have better bed, sad man. I sat in that little room and I called him. I was emotional on the phone. I called him. I wanted a pity party. Your husband said, Ken Brown, get yourself together. He said, I ain't preaching another bishop's funeral. And you will not die. Believe what you've been preaching. And I almost hung up the phone on this brother like, man. So I asked him to come tonight and have words. And we started years ago together. People think we planned to walk off the scene together, but there was no great meeting of the minds. It's just time. And I'm just so proud of who he is and what he does. And so I'm going to invite him and then Pastor Jeff, I'm going to invite you. So. Sir, as the Lord leads you, before we lay hands on this man of God, would you just help us to understand the night? There we go. Good evening, church. I'm not sure if you fully comprehend what God is doing, or possibly you do comprehend it, but you haven't found the language to express your gratitude for what God is doing. But when you see a man like our bishop, who just based on what you heard tonight, he could do this 10 more years, 15 more years, 20 more years. But what kind of man has the humility and the foresight to say, even though I can do it, doesn't mean I'm supposed to do. I, I don't know if you all, in the midst of your conversations with your friends and your cousins who want to talk about why your bishop retired, you don't retire from the ministry, why he retired? He doing some of his best preaching right now. They don't understand that the church is not limited to us. This church is going on beyond us. And I think before we go any further, we ought to give God praise for a bishop with the foresight and the humility to say, it's time. Come on, y'all. Clap with your hands, but shout with your voice. God, we bless your name. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you, Lord. The Mount. At Chesapeake, would you all remain standing? Everyone else can be seated. It is very interesting. We came in 34 years ago together. And like brothers, we came in together and we're going out together. And so I'm grateful for a spiritual niece and nephew that uh, I'm very proud of and very grateful to be connected to their lives. The word of the Lord says in Hebrews 13 and 7 and verse 17, remember your leaders who taught you the word of God. Think of all the good that has come from their lives and follow the example of their faith. Obey your spiritual leaders and do what they say. Their work is to watch over your souls. They are accountable to God. Give them reason to do this with joy. I'm going to say that again. Give them reason to do this with joy and not with sorrow. For that, and this is what the Bible says, the New Living Translation, for that would certainly not be for your benefit. It is not in your best interest to make it sorrowful for them to represent you before the Father. 
but it is in your best interest to give them reason to do what they're about to do with joy and not with sorrow. Based upon the reading of God's word to the mount tonight, I, I offer these vows and then the subsequent charge. I'm going to ask you to respond to the first two areas of the vows with the response we do. Do you, the members of the Mount at Chesapeake, receive Pastor James L.J. and Dr. Keisha Brown as your shepherds? Do you commit before God to love them, honor them, and pray for them? And to this part of the vow, I'll ask you to respond with the words, we will. Will you encourage, follow, and speak well of them at all times? I therefore now charge you as a bishop in the Lord's church to honor the vows that you have made, Mount Chesapeake. I further charge you to be faithful in your giving, in your living, and in your attending in the house of the Lord. I charge you to honor the preaching, the teaching, and the visionary direction of this man and woman of God just as you have honored Bishop and Elder Brown. If you accept this charge, would you lift your hands and surrender and let's worship as we seal this vow in prayer. Come on, lift those hands. Come on, lift those hands and give God worship. Come on, open your mouth and your worship is the response to the charge. Father, I want to thank you for raising up this house and every house that is connected to it. I want to thank you for our bishop, for Elder Valerie, and for their faithful work for these nearly 35 years. I want to thank you, Lord, that they have left us in a good place. They have left us in a strong place. They have put us in a position to win. And we want to thank you for them now. We thank you for this house and we thank you for these ministers and deacons and those who serve as department heads and leaders and pastors. We thank you for the people of God. We thank you for their families and their children. We thank you for this house. And tonight we give you thanks for our new pastor. We want to thank you, Lord. Lord, for raising this man of God up in this season. We want to thank you for putting a word in his mouth. We want to thank you for giving him a, a vision that is out of the box, extraordinary, above and beyond the norm. We want to thank you for him and for his companion, Dr. Keisha. We thank you, Lord, for raising them up. We thank you for their birth. We thank you, Lord, for their parents. We thank you for their upbringing. We thank you for their children. We thank you for their marriage. We thank you for their commitment to us. We thank you for their love for us. We thank you for their humility. We thank you for the spirit of excellence that is upon them. And we as this church embrace them as our pastors. We receive the charge. We release the vow. And we say yes to the man of God that you have placed in this house. And if you say yes, give God a shout in the building. That's my friend right there, y'all. I cannot wait to return the favor of being there with his children in a few months. And um, those of you that don't know this, so I don't know, I guess about a month ago, Pastor LJ and I were meeting, and he said, got lunch with Pastor David. And I said, man, that's good. He said, yeah, we're going to pick up where you and Bishop left off. And um, this is what he told me, though, Bishop. He said, but we're going to take it to another level. <laughs> I said, I believe that. And so we pray for um, Bishop as he goes through the same season that we're walking through together. What a surprise tonight to have this next man. He's going to come just before we go into the formal portion of laying on of hands. Chesapeake, you know this, that during this journey, about a year and a half, Dr. Chan has been my ministry coach. 
Pastor Jeff, you've heard Pastor LJ talk about him so much, has been Pastor LJ's ministry coach. What y'all don't know is a couple of weeks ago, maybe a week ago, Bishop Macbeth is on the flight with Elder and they're flying somewhere and they happen to be sitting in proximity. So he said, yeah, Elder Val told me she's so glad that we found Pastor Jeff because he probably saved our marriage. Because when we started talking about this transition, oh God, Bishop would just lose his cool and be yelling and screaming. Now, can y'all see that? I just want y'all to ask. I just want to really ask y'all, does that even look like my temperament? I am so even keeled, just like your new pastor. I'm so laid back and reserved, just like him. And um, y'all laugh at the wrong time. <laughs> and so one of those encounters, I'm sure Pastor Jeff remembers it. We were in Atlanta. I don't know, we were, we were overseas. And we were sitting, Dr. Chan, we had just finished eating breakfast with Dr. Chan. Pastor Jeff said, man, since we all here, can we go ahead and have a meeting this morning after breakfast to talk about the succession plan and everything? I said, yeah, man, yeah, 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 yeah. And you know, I just finished eating breakfast, so I'm feeling pretty good. We in this excited location. And, and he, I don't know what button he hit that day, but it was the wrong button. And I jumped up, the folk in the restaurant was looking, because I got loud. You on, you on Elder Valerie's side. And I, know, I know I acted a fool. I, I'm going to tell you all the truth. I acted a fool. It was not Christ-like. I acted a fool. I felt like I was under attack. Folk in the restaurant didn't know if they needed to be getting ready to call the policeman or something. And I just walked on out and left them sitting there. I said, well, y'all just sit here, and y'all come tell me what y'all had figured out then when it's, I supposed to work. And I walked away. That evening, Pastor Jeff called me and he said, man, Bishop, you okay? He said, man, I ain't really trying to affect your marriage. If you think I need to stop. He said, man, God, that was a little tight today. I said, no, nah, man, you pushing the right buttons. He made me wrestle with some stuff I just wasn't ready to wrestle with. And so it would be robbery for the amount of time that this man has poured into this couple over the last year for him not to express greetings or say whatever's on his heart. So would you put your hands together and receive him as he comes. God bless you, church. It is an honor to be here tonight. I was scheduled to be in Denver this weekend, and I did not want to miss this moment. And so I had the office redirect my flight. I'll leave out tomorrow, but I wanted to be here because of my love and my admiration and regard for this family. Yeah. I was not able to be here the weekend of shift weekend. I told Bishop as he came in tonight, I said I did watch the video and uh, I told him the countenance that you have tonight is far different than the countenance that you had that <laughs> night. I saw a lightness, I saw a joy in your face when I saw you this evening. As I was driving over, I felt like God was telling me, you're getting ready to see generational blessing tonight. We've heard enough about generational curses I think we ought to celebrate generational blessing. Anybody grateful that the blessing is greater than the curse? If you're thankful, take about three seconds and give God praise for generational blessing here tonight. And you know, the God that we serve, he is a multi-generational God. He's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I was thinking about he's a multi-generational God, and as I was thinking about that, I was reminded of Paul's words to Timothy. He said, Timothy, I see something in you. He said, but what I see in you, it didn't start with you. <laughs> it precedes you. 
He said, matter of fact, what I'm looking at, I saw that same thing in your grandmother. And I saw it in your mother. And it now rests in and upon you. Bishop, as you were talking tonight and you kept mentioning transition, I kept hearing transfer. Transfer. In the transition, there is a transfer. Yeah. And it's interesting that we see that transfer with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We see that transfer, Lois, Eunice, and Timothy. Tonight, may there be a transfer. Mount, I know God loves you because he graced you with these two fine leaders, Moses and Elijah. But I know he really loves you because he's given you Pastor LJ and Dr. Keisha right behind it. Someone shout transfer. I can't feel you. Everybody shout transfer. Getting ready to sit down. But I remember in that passage, Paul says to Timothy right after he reminds him that there's been a generational transfer, what's in you preceded you. He says then, fan into flames the spiritual gift. That's a strong admoni admonition. Fan into flames. That that is in you, the winds of adversity will try to blow out. Challenges will come, adversity will come, disappointments will come. But he tells Timothy, fan into flames that spiritual gift. I just want to encourage you that as you take this assignment, as you step into this mission, this mandate, continue to fan the flame. Fan the flame, first P, by putting yourself in remembrance of the promise of God is upon your life. For the promises of God are yes and amen. Fan the flame of the gift of God that is in you, not only with putting yourself in remembrance of the promise, but through earnest prayer, the effectual, fervent prayer of the righteous, it will avail much. You put with the promise the prayer, and on top of the promise and the prayer, always put a praise. Because God inhabits the praises of his people. Let there always be a shout in this house, for it was the shout that brought the walls down at Jericho. Let the shout of the king be in the midst of this house because of the great transfer that occurs tonight. And I declare that as you fan the flames, that flame will bring warmth to many. It will bring light to many. Never let the flame go out. So proud of you. So happy for you. So blessed to be a part of this journey. May God bless you. Come on, church. Make a little noise right here. Come on, stir it up for just a minute. Come on, let our praise fan the flame right here for what God is doing in this transfer tonight. God bless you. Bless you, man. Those of you that want to know how that worked, you can remain standing because you're next. Um, it made it so much easier for us. I was talking to a colleague the other day who's transitioning and his son is following him and he said, man, what was the moment that made it so smooth? I said, I could start telling Pastor Jeff what my concerns were and Pastor Jeff could communicate them to Pastor LJ and he didn't see his dad and so I would share with him he would share with them and then he'd come back to me an elder and sir I'm, I'm indebted to you um, for what God has used you to do I'm indebted to Dr. Chan for telling me to choose you and he sends his regrets tonight you know he wanted to be here he's been um, fighting some health challenges as well as Pastor Alvin for those of you that don't know it's Pastor Carl's fault. Because Pastor Carl did this uh, sneakers 
what you call it, pastors and sneakers, preachers and sneakers, where they play against these high school kids that I see Norcom, and then after they play, they give them all Jordans. Pastor Alvin played in the game the other day, and I tried to tell them, y'all ain't figured this out. Pastor Carl leads the moment, but does not play. I said, y'all don't see Pastor Carl is telling y'all we ain't got no business running up and down the court with these 17 and 16-year-old boys. I said, take a note from the leader, the leader out there holding the microphone, doing the play-by-play while y'all run up and down the thing. And Pastor Alvin, um, you know, represented well, did very, very well, you know. But you know men, and it, and it was really no contact or anything, but in the midst of just running down the court, tore his Achilles. And so um, he had planned to be here tonight. Me and Elder actually sent Elder's rolling thing over to the house. And he said he was going to roll in, but we tried to, Elder tried to tell him last night. She had been through two, what, two hip replacements and a knee replacement. She told him last night, he like, Bishop, I don't feel no pain. I'll be there in my night. Bro, your leg is numb. You don't even know you got a right leg right now. And that's what we're talking about. No, he watching. And Elder was hollering in the back, tell him stay ahead of the pain. Start taking that medicine now. This morning, that brother texted Pastor LJ and said, man, this stuff, whatever they did in that surgery has worn off. And this thing, he said, man, I don't think I'm going to be able to make it. And we told him last night, Pastor, you ain't got to come out there, but, to, but that's why he's not here tonight, or we would all be standing in solidarity. Sir, the vow. In the name of Jesus Christ, who is God Almighty, I, James E. Brown, a chosen elder of Christ's holy church, solemnly declare that I do believe the holy scriptures of the Old and New Testaments to be the word of God and to contain all things necessary to salvation. I do solemnly engage to continue in the doctrine, discipline, and worship of the Mount Global Fellowship of Churches. Amen. My brother, you have been chosen by God and the people have affirmed their trust in you by supporting your appointment. A pastor in God's holy church is called to be one with the apostles in proclaiming Christ's resurrection and interpreting the gospel and to testify to Christ's sovereignty as Lord of lords and King of kings. With your fellow presbyters, you will share in the leadership of the church throughout the world. Your heritage is the faith of patriarchs, prophets, apostles, martyrs, and those of every generation who have looked to God in hope. Your joy will be to follow him who came, not to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. The Bishop of the Mount Global Fellowship of Churches has assigned to you as pastor the following duties. Guard the faith, unity, and discipline of the church. Celebrate and provide for the administration of the sacraments of the new covenant. Be a faithful pastor and wholesome example for the entire flock. Submit yourself to God with all prayerful humility. Provide training and leadership to the church. Encourage the partners of the church. Are you persuaded that God has used his people to call you to the office of pastor? I am so persuaded. Will you accept this call and fulfill this trust in obedience to Christ? I will obey Christ and will serve in his name. Will you be faithful in prayer and in the study of Holy Scripture that you may have the mind of Christ? I will, for he is my help. Will you boldly proclaim the gospel of Christ, enlightening the minds and stirring up the consciences of your people? I will, in the power of the Spirit. As the chief priest and pastor, will you encourage us to support all baptized people and their gifts and ministries, nourish them from the riches of God's grace, pray for them without ceasing, and celebrate with them the sacraments of our redemption. I will, in the name of Christ, the shepherd and bishop of our souls. Will you guard the faith, unity, and discipline of the church? I will. Will you share with your fellow presbyters in the government of the whole church? Will you sustain your fellow presbyters and take counsel with them? Will you guide and strengthen the deacons and all others who minister in the church? 
I will by the grace given me. Will you be merciful to all, show compassion to the poor and strangers, and defend those who have no helper? I will for the sake of Christ Jesus our Lord. Will you be obedient to me as bishop who shall have oversight for you and the ministry? I will. Receive the Holy Scriptures. Feed the flock of Christ committed to your charge. Guard and defend them in his truth and be a faithful steward of his holy word and sacrament. All right, sir, would you stay on your knees? Dr. Keisha, you can come. Get on your knees behind him for the... Believe, get on your knees beside him, I'm sorry. For the believers that are here, we're not installing her. She's not co-pastor. She's Dr. Keish. That's what TMP gave her. And so, but she is the person that he's going to cry to when life gets overwhelming. You see these great men and women of God. Y'all pray for Elder Deneen. You might want to be at Western Branch first Sunday in May. They going to kill about 18 demons. <laughs> I'm going to ask um, Bishop McBath to come and Pastor Jeff, would you come, sir? Y'all have been friends and poured so much into him. And would you join me in laying hands on him? Okay. Superman returns. Before I give you the illustration, I'm not calling myself Superman. This ain't no demigodish stuff. But for those of you that are followers of Superman, in Superman Returns, Superman discovers he's got a son. And when he first sees his son, this is what he says to his son. He says, you will be different. Sometimes you'll feel like an outcast, but you'll never be alone. You will make my strength your own. You will see my life through your eyes as your life will be seen through mine. Then he gives him a quote. He says, the son becomes the father, and the father becomes the son. You will be different. You're called to be different. Come on, let's come together, brethren. Thank you all. Yep. Mm. God, our Father. Make James E. Brown, the pastor of the Mount at Chesapeake. God, what we do tonight is simply affirm your destiny and affirm yes. your will. Yes. But only you can make him the pastor. Yes. So would you give him now a fresh anointing? For there is a generation that 
is waiting for his gift. Would you blow a fresh wind in the mount at Chesapeake? God, as someone who served here for over 33 years, thank you for the believers that have served with me. And I pray now that you would give them courage and conviction yes. to be able to stand with my son. Yes. God, I've stood with their sons. And I ask you now to help them to stand with mine. Thank you for Pastor Jeff who reminded us that as Clarestine Johnson would only listen to religious programming all day with her Sunday school book on the dining room table and her deaconess dress hanging up in the bedroom. Tonight, the gift of a grandmother on her maternal, on his maternal side, and the spirit of peace and hospitality of a grandmother on his paternal side, and the faith of a mother that got up off of her knees years ago and declare that God told me starting tonight, he's got my son. Thank you for a praying grandmother. Thank you for a praying mother. God, thank you for the providence of this night that we catch up with the fullness of time. For you knew when I met this queen in the jewelry store that you were really setting up generational blessing and generational grace and generational gifting. Yes. And so God, tonight we release him now. Give him vision like no one else has ever seen. And give the people of God and the staff of God the courage and conviction to follow the vision even when they don't fully understand it. We thank you, God, for his consecration. We thank you for the witness of his life. And we commend him into your hand now. In the name of Jesus. Amen. give you glory. I'm with whoever that is. God, we give you glory. All right. So, what, a few months ago, we took the medallion that, or Dr. Keisha took the medallion that was on her neck and um, gave it to First Lady Brandy who is now the first lady at the Mount at Portsmouth. And so tonight it is elders good pleasure. Man, y'all got elder up here tomorrow. Whew. I know. Yep. And as she puts this medallion around Dr. Keisha's neck, it's my pleasure to announce that at Holy Convocation this June, because of what we've seen God doing through her with Purpose Her, we will lay our hands on her and ordain her. Okay. Yeah. You might have to, you know, I ain't got no fingernails. So. Okay. I got fingernails, but. 
but they're not as proficient as yours. And sir, you took your medallion off and put it on the neck of Pastor Mike as your successor at the Mount at Portsmouth. And so, I need to do this for Pastor Quentin. The bishop wears gold, and each one of the site pastors wears silver. Thank y'all. Y'all look good in your medallions. Amen. All right. So, next is credentials. All right. Y'all, um, Chesapeake, real proud of the fact that um, I think we've already signed the contract to overhaul the bowling alley as a part of your pastor's vision. So the bowling alley will be getting all new pin setters. And um, just grateful to God for how you gave. So. You have given, well, I don't want to steal it. I'm going to let him, I'm going to let him. No, I won't go give an amount, but I was going to say what your giving will be doing. You know what pastor asked you to do with the giving. Wants to do the parking lot, um, take care of the exterior of the building, um, upgrade the exterior of the building, blaze the mount down the side of the building so when you're driving down Cedar Road, you're going to have to come visit because it's going to be etched in your mind because it's going to be down the whole side of the building, they tell me. Um, overhaul the bowling alley. And um, he finally got office furniture. I'm just telling y'all, y'all need to go check out that brother's office. I was feeling a little salty when I walked in the other day. Um, first of all, he got two big old TVs in there. I don't know why he got two TVs all these 33 years. I ain't had but one TV in my office. Yeah, they, and they're bigger. Yeah, they're a lot bigger. Bishop, yeah, oh, they're a lot bigger. I had like a 55 inch. He got two 70 inches or something on the wall. I don't know. Looked like a movie theater in there. And um, his furniture. Yeah, he got a conference table in there. And um, got a fireplace behind his desk. So when he's doing his podcast, it'll be fire blazing up behind. I, I told him the other day, out here 33 years, I ain't never had no fireplace. That's so I'm getting a fireplace down the street, down the street. For those of you that don't know, I got a beautiful office down the street. I didn't want to be in this building. I didn't want to be in this, huh? Huh? He talking about generational blessings. But look, 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 I know we got to go, y'all, but this is such a sentimental night. Let me tell you how special um, this, this whole, this general, y'all think, y'all think this Mount Global Fellowship of Churches stuff is just for show. There's something on the fellowship. So let me tell y'all what was so crazy. You know, a part of my last resurrection, well, he, he did it. He gutted the whole admin, took all the wooden doors out. Now they all got glass doors like they're in a bank. Y'all pray for Pastor Fur because he got to keep his office clean now because you can, you can look right in the office and see everything in the office. You know, I don't like that. You know, you don't have no key. You got to click to get in your office and all this kind of stuff. So it's, it's high tech back there. It's just real high tech back there. What y'all looking at the screen? So it's real high tech back there. So the other day I'm walking through. Mount Western Branch. And I'm walking through. The building looks beautiful, y'all. So I'm looking at all these nice doors in the Mount Western Branch. And Corey said, man, we saved thousands of dollars, Bishop. I said, what did you do? He said, all these doors are the old doors from Chesapeake. <laughs> he said, man, we sanded them things down and painted them gray and hung them right on up in these door jams. And so Elder Denise said, the grace on Chesapeake going to be on Mount Western Branch. When you walk through every door, you walk it through it. When you walk through the doors, y'all still got the doors in the sanctuary when you walk through the doors. So that just really ministered to me. So he said, he said um, he wanted you to know. So I told Elder, I said, you know, Corey saved all this money for the Mount Western Branch. She said, yeah, at the end of the year, Corey going to write that on his end of the year review so he can get a bonus. I said, I'm sure he is. But... Uh, this is your certificate of vow, and sir, it's signed by you in your, your traditional non-readable signature. 
and my nice penmanship from Wilson High School is right there because, you know, Dr. Ella Ward taught us how to write in cursive, you know. I guess that's James Brown. We're going we gonna to say it is. Good thing it's printed, but it says it declares on the 19th day of April 2024. Um, the above vow is duly affirmed by these witnesses, um, Bishop Kim W. Brown, Elder Valerie K. Brown, Executive Pastor Emeritus. And so congratulations, sir. And then the certificate of installation is signed by myself, um, Elder Valerie Brown. You're going to have to get Pastor Alvin to sign it because he's not here today. And each one of the site pastors have signed it as well. So, sir, proud of you. Look how the young man carrying the chair and how the old man carrying the chair. Oh, I'm sorry. I should be presenting them. And I'm over here doing it. <coughs> Present them now? Okay. It is my pleasure to introduce to you for the very first time the new pastor of the Mount at Chesapeake. Before y'all speak, I just want y'all to know, CRC sent a check to the bishop for $2,500. Didn't you say it was for me? Oh, it's for the pastor. <laughs> oh, I misunderstood. I thought you said, oh, you sent y'all's in February for mine. Oh, CRC, okay. CRC sent y'all a check for $2,500. <laughs> Pay your tithe to your bishop. First of all, can y'all praise God for the bishop one time? Come on, let's honor, let's celebrate our bishop. And while you're clapping, can y'all make some noise for my mother, the elder? Absolutely. You may be seated, you may be seated. You may be seated. Y'all know I don't have a whole lot of comments, but I just want to get a you know, few words out. Um, thank y'all so much. First of all, thank y'all for being here on this evening. It means a lot um, just for y'all to be here. So thank you all. And uh, Dr. Keisha told me to write my comments down so I would, wouldn't forget. And, um, you know, I don't have a long speech or nothing fancy or anything like that, but I do want to say some thank yous. And my first thank you is to the Mount at Chesapeake Partners. Can y'all give yourselves? Thank you all. Thank you all for embracing the transition. Thank you all for embracing the shift. Thank you all for your continued support and, and your encouragement. Um, Bishop was, was talking about um, a lot tonight about Miss Barbados. I see Miss Barbados sitting there and Elder Raymond, Alexander. You can clap for them, absolutely. And um, as well as you know, Mother Ruth and Mother Coker, who we actually celebrated Mother Coker's birthday in a couple of days. And um, it it reminds me as I sit here and look at Miss Barbara Doors, it reminds me, Bishop, of just our journey, our entire journey here um, at the Mount for 33 years. And so I want to thank you all for the opportunity of allowing me to continue the legacy. Thank you all for the opportunity for allowing me to be able to continue the legacy. Uh, also, y'all know, I want to thank Chief, Chief of Staff Shannon. I want to thank, I want to thank Chief for all that she does. Thank you, Chief. Definitely want to thank Chief for all that she does. She does so much to just relieving me um, and just letting me be able to be able to be ready and prepared on Sunday. So de definitely want to thank Chief. And I want to thank the staff, all the staff and volunteers. Um, I definitely want to thank the staff. 
Thank you all for catching the vision um, that I'm trying to put forth. Thank you all for catching the vision, and not just my vision, but thank you all for sharing your dreams and your vision as well. A lot of what I've been talking to the staff about is um, not only do I have vision, but I feel like God has put vision into each one of them as well. He's given them vision, he's given them dreams and things and put in their heart. And so I thank you all um, for sharing your dreams with us as well. Um, and so thank you for your long hours. Thank you for those late nights uh, to able to help us to be able to ensure that we are able to help push forward the kingdom of God and to help change lives. So definitely want to thank the staff. Uh, Bishop already thought throughout Dr. Chan. Definitely want to thank Dr. Chan for his guidance and his wisdom, um, as well as his patience uh, with us and our family over this time. It's definitely greatly appreciated, sir. We love you. And then Pastor Jeff, can y'all praise God for Pastor Jeff? <laughs> sir, definitely want to thank you not only for your wisdom and your guidance and your expertise, but I personally want to thank you for your listening ear. And I want to thank you for your shoulder to allow me to cry on. I spent a lot of time crying. Not only did he um, impart into me just wisdom and things of that nature, but Pastor Jeff, sir, I told him almost as my therapist, y'all. I spent a lot of time literally crying um, to Pastor Jeff and him, him, him just helping me um, through and navigating certain things. So, sir, I greatly, greatly, greatly appreciate um, you and what you mean to me as well as Dr. Keisha. And so um, I definitely uh, look forward to continuing um, our conversations. And then uh, Bishop and Elder, can y'all make some noise once again for Bishop and Elder? As I was sitting here and I was trying to write my notes earlier, I honestly could not think of the words that I really wanted to say. I couldn't even really write them down. Um, it's almost like thinking about what I was trying to say today was almost like trying to get Christmas gifts for y'all. It's like, Kimberly knows, it's like it's the hardest thing in the world to try to find out what we're going to get them um, for Christmas. And so uh, what I will say is just thank you all uh, for all you've done. You've done so much. You've taught me so much. Um, you've showed me so much. You've exposed me um, to so much. And um, I find myself thinking about the scripture that just says, if I had a thousand tongues, I couldn't thank y'all enough. And so I appreciate y'all. And um, I think the best way that I could show y'all how much I appreciate y'all and thank y'all is to, you know, just continue on what you all departed into me to carry on in the life of this ministry and then to pass it on to anybody who will receive it. So thank you all so much. I love y'all, Mama. Thank you for praying for me all the many nights and, you know, all that. I'm so glad God told you that he got me. And so I hope, I hope that I'm able to continue to make y'all proud. And then last but certainly not least, my girl. My girl, Dr. Keisha. I definitely, definitely want to thank you. Um, you know, I keep telling her, I tell her all the time, when I told y'all before, she's my secret weapon. She is really my secret weapon. I don't know if it's so much of a secret anymore, um, but she is definitely my secret weapon. And um, I thank you, honey, for just everything that you do for me. I wouldn't be here today if it was not for you. I really would not. Um, thank you for your push. I appreciate your push sometimes. Sometimes I appreciate your push, but I thank you for um, just loving me, even when it may not be so easy to. I appreciate you loving me, and uh, I appreciate you riding with me always. And please know, you already know that I'm going to always ride for you, and I love you. All right, time to go. She's kissing me too much. She's kissing me too much. Mount Chesapeake, y'all ready to do this? Y'all ready to do this? Y'all ready to make the devil mad? Y'all ready to take territory for God's kingdom? Let's rock and roll, man. I love y'all so much. I love y'all. I don't know. Can y'all may praise God for Bishop one more time as he comes? Look, y'all, real quick, real quick. It came to my attention that many people are holding their gift for pastor and first lady and didn't give because I wasn't as clear and I'm so sorry about that. I'm going to be a good usher. You can you can bring your gift and, and drop it right here in the bucket. I'll even hold it up at the end. All things come of thee, O oh Lord. 
Um, but if you have if you have a gift for them that you did not bring, I mean that you did not give in the other offering, if you gave it in the other offering and it was earmarked, it will definitely go to them. But if you didn't, I understand people were texting me saying we didn't know that it was time to give. So if you don't have if you haven't given that, you can bring it right now and place it in the, in the um, bucket. You can tap your phone. Come on, come on, Deacon Ronnie. Man, I'm counting on you, sir. You've been riding with me. In fact, Ronnie, I ain't, I ain't being funny. When you started riding with me, your beard was black. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, we both are. But, but love you and Lisa, man. I'm sorry, Bishop. I did want to um, allow um, Dr. Keisha an opportunity yeah. to say something. But I also wanted to thank g Pa and g Ma, Dr. Keisha's um, mother and father. Can y'all praise God for them? Thank y'all. I cannot let this moment go past without thanking G-Ma and G-Pa. Thank y'all for everything y'all do. Y'all know we would not be able to do all that Dr. Keisha and I do without y'all. So thank y'all so much. If you desire to bless Pastor LJ and Lady Keisha electronically, you can scan the QR code and it's going to take you directly to their cash app. Amen, somebody. Somebody say cash app. back on that. Y'all know it, do, it does take a village to raise these children. And so literally, I thank my mom and my dad. Obviously, we thank Bishop and Elder. Um, I don't want to be redundant. But I do also want to say thank you to Dr. Kimberly and the entire finance team. They have not missed a beat since we have made this transition. And that has just been a blessing. Um, and then again, just thank you to the Mount Partners um, at large, the media team for making the shift. I mean, each and every Sunday and everything they do. And then y'all just, your energy, y'all are literally just the best people ever. I told y'all a couple weeks ago that we went to, I went to Houston and I felt like I was at home. But when I came back, I was just reminded of the goodness of the people here um, at the Mount Global Fellowship of Churches in the Mount Chesapeake. So thank y'all. We love y'all. And I just wanted to get that out as well. All right. We ready to go home. Thank y'all for giving up a Friday evening to be with us. And um, I'm just so grateful, you know, for this day. And they're right. These, these children, you know, they got small children. Our armor bearers, me and elders armor bearers, I was telling Bishop earlier, all they did is put our Bible on the pulpit and make sure we had the right thing to drink. Their armor bearers got to change diapers. So y'all are beasts. I just want to thank y'all, man. And so last Sunday, they think me and elder don't have anything to do. So last Sunday, he gonna call me, say, KJ got a football game. Can you take him to the football game in the morning at eight o'clock? It's Sunday morning, I got something to do. And so I texted him back, said, no, man, I'm sorry, I can't, I'm preaching for Pastor Alvin. He's like, oh, yeah, that's right, man, I forgot. I forgot. I wanted to say, I, I wanted to say, how much y'all paying me to take him to the football game? Because, you know, Mount Penn about to bless a brother, you know. And so I called him after, the, after church. I said, man, who took KJ to the football game? He said, one of the armor bearers. And so thank y'all so much for how you take care of our family. And uh, last but certainly not least, I got to say, um, you know, it's rare when extended families can get together, like in-laws, and I don't like that word, but I don't know any better word for that. And so y'all got to understand, we go on vacation, it'll be Mr. Joe and Miss Sandy, and, and we'll be in the same house, and then Dr. Kimberly's in-laws, all of us be in the same house. And so thank you, Linwood and, and, and Miss Fan and Mother Fanny for being with us. Um, and then they, they, they rent houses and bring us to where they are. And you know, when you can get three different groups of family together for a week and everybody good, that's got to be the hand of the Lord. And so, I mean, we, we literally, I mean, I mean, literally be good. Everybody just fellowships together. Thank you, um, Sister Rhonda, and to all of Linwood's family. Thank you. Linwood for just being a son-in-law man and just just rolling with us and we just love y'all. All right, we ready to go? Y'all, now here's what I want y'all to do. They new to this thing. So let me tell y'all how to do it. Break them in good tonight. 
Everybody in here shake their hand. Break them in good. Everybody in here ask for a selfie and a picture for your aunt that's in New York and your cousin in Nebraska. Wear them out. Do it in Jesus' name and then wait till they walking out the door and say, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I ain't get my picture and run up to them again. And yeah, do it. Look at your neighbor and tell them, let's do it one by one. Wear them out in Jesus' name. Let's stand. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and present us faultless before the throne of God to the only almighty God be glory and majesty, dominion and power. I declare, y'all, that we are blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed when we come, blessed when we go in Jesus' name. Amen.